We've had the DL550 in our possession for over 10 months and put several hundred hours on. It's time to give you our thoughts on it. All right, I got Aaron with me here today. I brought him along because you've probably put as many hours on this as uh, just about anybody has. Yeah, more than you. Uh, probably, you probably have. So, <laughs> all right, we're gonna go through, just kind of cover the highlights, uh, what we figured out, what we like, what we don't like after running this machine. We have run it in a variety of different scenarios with the blade, with the bucket, with different attachments. I feel like we got a pretty good grasp on what it's capable of and what it can do. So let's kind of start by going around the outside. First off, this is the DL550. So if you guys that don't know, this is the dozer loader and 5,500 pound tipping capacity. This is very similar to the CTL620, which is the big skid steer uh, they have also come out with our CTL. Just a couple of the differences to hit on right off the bat. The 550 has a different underpan, which is, allows the blade to clip in. It has different controls inside to match it being a dozer, because it is a dozer first. And it also has a little bit of different hydraulic valving in it to get some of the functions on the blades. Other than that, guys, this is basically a 620. It's the same frame, it's the same pump, it's the same engines same cab all that stuff's pretty much the same so very similar machines with a few distinct differences so the first thing everybody goes to on this is the undercarriage with the steel tracks and i do have a few thoughts and opinions on this the this machine is offered with basically three different types of undercarriage this is the single grouser which is this thing right here single grouser steel rail undercarriage they also offer a triple grouser, which basically there'd be three of these bars, very similar to an excavator, same steel rail, and then they offer the traditional rubber track. I am a huge fan of the steel tracks from a wear aspect. I get a lot of comments. I couldn't believe you want to put steel tracks on this thing because they're going to wear out in no time. I don't know for sure. This is the same undercarriage I have on my D4 dozer. This is pretty much the same weight. It's about an 18,000 pound machine. I'm pretty confident we can get about four to 5,000 hours out of this undercarriage depending on application. I think with a rubber track application and this much horsepower, you're gonna be lucky to get 1,000 hours out of it. So that's four times the life out of this. Now, it does have a few disadvantages with the steel tracks. You do lose some top speed. It don't quite travel as fast. It is a little bit more noisy. And with the single grouser configuration, you do get a little bit limited on where you can operate on hard surfaces as far as like concrete and asphalt. And it does seem to be a little more destructive like in a yard scenario. Yeah. But the pushing power and the wearability of those also has some huge advantages. I think if I was to purchase this machine, I would most likely go steel tracks triple grouser is what I would think. I kind of get the yeah. best of best of both worlds yeah um that's kind of kind of what i'm thinking uh as far as the rest of the machine itself um i would say my biggest complaint externally is the noise of that fan the machine itself is honestly not that loud but that fan is very uh yeah very loud very noisy uh there's a lot of engine in there to cool there's a lot of hydraulics in there to cool and we had no issues with it overheating whatsoever. The fan definitely does the job, but it is uh, definitely very noticeable. The most noticeable thing you probably hear when it's actually running. This thing here weighs about 18,000 pounds and it has a 114 horsepower engine in it. It has the FPT, the Fiat Power. Uh, I think it's called Fiat, Fiat Power Train Engine and uh, may not be the most notable name in the engine world, but that is basically the case Fiat engine has been around for a long time. Very, very, very uh, reliable power plant. But uh, should we jump inside and check out the cab a little bit? So. Aaron's hopped up in the machine. Should we talk about this right off the bat? They know our thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I fully understand why manufacturers do this from an engineering standpoint. A roll-up door is, uh, there's a lot more that goes into it. A swing outdoor is much easier, much simpler operation. But my personal thoughts is 
that is a huge, huge, huge safety issue. And number two, it's a convenience factor yes. of uh, different things. I know guys are gonna point out, this does have the rear removable glass uh, as an escape. It does have the uh, button over there to lower the arms down, which is which is definitely good. But man, uh, it's just a roll up door is so much more convenient, so many more options. And I also think it gives you a little bit better visibility because a lot of times you'll remove a lot of this stuff. But with that being said, it is a nice door. It does work good. It does serve as its purpose. And that's probably more of a personal opinion than a than an actual issue with yeah. it. But we've just kind of got accustomed to them over the years and yeah. hard to beat. So, all right, moving into the cab, a couple things right off the bat. Let's talk visibility. It is pretty decent out the sides and out the uh, front. Not out the back. Not out the back. <laughs> they do give you but. two different options. You got a very nice mirror up here, which does do a pretty good job. You cannot see the ripper in this though. No. Uh, then the second option is over here on the it's screen, all. they do got a high def uh, rear view camera, which you can see the ripper in it. So they do give you a couple options to see out the back, but you have to learn to become dependent on this yep. or that, because looking over your shoulder is uh, it took pretty, a while to get used to that. It takes a little while to yeah. get used to, um, especially with uh, shadows and stuff. It just, it's, it's kind of like learning all over again. You can definitely get it. They definitely got tools here to um to cover the blind spot back there but it is a very very large um uh, blind spot so yeah. let's move on down slide over just a little bit i want to point out this seat the seat itself is well constructed and comfortable but for me it don't quite go up high enough in the back for you it don't me it's perfect i'm an <laughs> so, average guy it uh it's a little bit uncomfortable for myself now the reasoning why this don't go up any higher is because they got to make sure you have access to get out that back window in the case of an emergency so that's why that seat sucked down a little bit not a huge issue but it is something i've noticed uh versus running a couple other machines mm -hmm. next on the list seat belt seat belt um the reason why this machine has a seat belt in it is to make it, keep in mind guys, it is a dozer first. So most dozers have seat belts, not lap bars. Um, the seat belt to me ends up being a little bit of an inconvenience versus just folding over a bar or, or flopping a bar down. Mm -hmm. You do have to have the seat belt engaged to get the hydraulics to release to, to work. And the way it's located is just a little bit inconvenient to uh, put on and work around. Even a little guy. <laughs> so even a guy your yeah, size, yeah. huh? So it's getting reaching out to get it to come across. So yeah. All right, moving forward, as you guys will notice, like I said, this is a dozer first, so it has the actual dozer controls. These are the same controls you will find in um, in an actual case dozer of any larger size. I really don't have a whole lot of complaints about that. We did run a 620 slightly that has the actual joysticks. I think I would be fine uh, with either one. Uh, this one does, whenever you go to travel forward, will click in yeah. the same as a dozer, uh, which is nice. Uh, basically D10 in. In dozer mode, I do like having the actual dozer control for the blade itself. Uh, don't really have any, any thoughts on that. I guess I'm a little bit indifferent whether I had the joysticks or the thing in it. Case's thought in this is, is they wanted to wanted it to be a dozer first to feel more like a dozer, and and, and I'm I'm fair game with that. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, one place these fall a little bit short is whenever you're in CTL mode. And if you look over here, we've got a whole line of buttons. Yeah. Your favorite things. Yeah, my favorite we, things. We got buttons everywhere. This side over here is pretty neat and yeah. straightforward. This is your ISO uh, dozer mode. You got your start, park and Park brake, push to operate, throttle, and lights. That's pretty I like straightforward. This side. So what I want to hit on a little bit is, is if you're running an attachment that has multiple hydraulic functions, let's say a stump grinder, a firewood processor, or a power rake, or something like that, most of your CTLs are going to have the buttons on the joystick here, so you don't have to take your hand off. Here, you have to reach up and hit them over here on the A-pillar, which becomes a little bit more of an inconvenience to run those multiple functions, especially if you're trying to do them on the fly with like a stump grinder or our AMI ruckus rake. So I think that's one place maybe the dozer control comes a little bit uh, short is not having these functions actually on the joystick itself. The other thing, this is your auxiliary hydraulic, uh, like if you're running a mulching head or a mower um, or ruckus rake, 
you can detent and lock this in, but the way your thumb rolls on that, it uh, after a couple hours it becomes a little bit, a little bit inconvenient. Obviously not a not a huge deal, but uh, just a few things to wear on CTL mode don't quite measure up to maybe its counterpart the uh, 620. But as far as cab size, comfortability, air conditioning, heating and air, um, leg room, it's top it's top notch. Uh, one thing I do want to point out is on camera, you guys talk about a little bit of cab noise. Um, actually, in the cab, it's not that bad. There's just something about the harmonics the camera picks up. Yeah. Um, it's, I would say, it's very acceptable noise levels inside the cab, wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, talking on our radios and communicating that way back and forth. Back and forth like that. Um, no, no issues whatsoever. Um, I, I don't really have any complaints about the noise in the cab or... Uh, or the ride or the the comfortability with the HVAC air conditioning anything like that. It's all it's all top-notch So no no major rattles everything's pretty pretty quiet. So um, I uh, I like it. This does have the monitor up here. I do like the placement of it um, It's not uh, what come on up there Everything's pretty well laid out on it. The only disadvantage of it is it's not touch screen. You have to use the different buttons down here. Once you get used to it, it's not uh, it's not that big a deal. It's just a little bit a little bit different learning how to how to um, work your way through the monitor. But yeah, once you get her figured out, it's pretty simple and pretty straightforward. So, anything else you'd like to add? I think I about covered it all in here. Uh -huh. Did yeah. a good job, didn't I? Yeah. So, all right. Well, let's move on and talk about attachments. Since this machine is considered a dozer first, I think rightfully so, we should talk about the dozer blade attachment. What do you think? So, that is what sets this machine apart from any other thing in the market, guys, to be honest with you. This is the same blade they use on their actual dozer models. I believe it's the 650. Uh, C-frame, geometry, cylinders, all is pretty much the same. This is what here is a little bit different. This is where it couples into the machine and this is what makes this machine is so different. So we are actually taking the load, pushing on it down low is the same as you would with a traditional dozer, shoving that blade forward, which makes a huge difference when you actually operate this thing. Uh, one thing we need to hit on right off the bat is how fast you can get this blade off that dozer and switch over to a different yeah, a different thing. That, so that will be a, I think that already has been a big question to you. Yeah, so... Case actually issued a little bit of a challenge to a few of us guys that had these things. I believe we officially, unofficially won this challenge, didn't we? I ain't heard anybody beat it yet. <laughs> so I might throw the video in there if I get a chance. But basically what they wanted you to do was start off coupled up to the blade, disconnect, drive around the blade, come back into it and recouple, which would basically... Uh, would basically encompass coupling and uncoupling. Yeah. And we were able to do that in under a minute. Yeah. So you could literally switch this thing from a dozer to a CTL in less than a minute yeah. pretty handily. And we got video video evidence to prove that. Yeah. Once you kind of get the hang of it, you can go, go at it pretty well. So this thing here is basically an 18,000 pound machine. Uh, whenever you get the blade on it, it's basically an 18,000 pound bulldozer with a 114 horse. And I would say it would push the same quantity wise and power wise as any other machine on the market that's in that class 18,000 pounds 144 horse pretty handily it keeps up with our d4 no issues as far as the amount of dirt pushing yeah, power i guess yeah. is what i'm trying to trying to say would you agree with that i'd agree with that now the questions that come up time and time again is the great ability with the short wheelbase or the short track frame and visibility and they are both a little bit of an issue so this is where i want to kind of caution everybody if you are a seasoned dozer operator and you go to hop into this machine you are not going to get it right off the bat yeah, you can't go in the mindset that you're on a d4 <laughs> no <laughs> it will do the same thing it has the same capabilities but there is some major differences one you're sitting much farther forward on the machine so the balance point the feel you guys have in your your butt of lack of better terminologies is a little bit different uh the track uh the length of the track makes a little bit of a difference the visibility to the blade makes a little bit of a difference this is not a machine you're going to hop in and be an expert operator the first five or ten minutes you run it now with that being said you spend a little bit of time in this machine 
and you get her dialed in and you learn all the nuances and kind of feel all that stuff and even a seasoned dozer operator will tell you uh, after a while you don't watch the blade as much as you feel the machine mm -hmm. so visibility becomes less of an issue uh, you kind of learn how to adjust and predict what's coming with a great ability that becomes less of an issue and you can yeah. you can do it yeah you can do it for sure and you do you do find the visibility you do like find me, i'm not an operator but i was able to know where i needed to look if i wanted to see what i was doing and i'll be honest aaron probably spent more time on this machine in dozer mode and there towards the end it was, you were you're getting pretty I think, slick i think i could finish better than you could in this thing i don't know if i'll go that far but <laughs> I, i'm pretty close but, but overall yeah. i was extremely impressed with how much it would push yeah. Like it will literally push as much as our D4 would. Yeah. I think uh, you got videos of, of pushing even like the uh, the trees when we were pushing the trees. Yeah. You got them videos. Yeah. yeah, pushing the brush and stuff. And that was in very muddy, yeah, less than ideal conditions. So uh, I don't really have any complaints. I have operated other CTLs that have the traditional dozer blade that just couples right into the arms. This is a completely different ball game, guys. I I've ran both. I don't care what the comment says. This thing here will cut and push far superior to anything that couples to those arms because you take all the slop and all the geometry out of all that. You're taking that load straight to the machine to where it needs to be. And uh it's uh it is a pretty it is a pretty slick system how it all goes on there. Everything's hydraulically attached. It's it's awesome. So the one shortcoming I noticed it did have and it showed up on that little retention pond job is the blade don't quite raise as high as what it would on a conventional dozer so if you're dozing kind of down and coming back up sometimes you might get yourself in trouble not having the highs to come up and the way this c-frame right here is actually a little bit closer to the ground so you lose some of your ground clearance uh, especially back dragging and stuff like that may get you in a little bit of trouble but it's again it's just kind of the nuances of the machine once you get her figured out um, you're pretty much good to go my take on this would be if you're buying a machine for a dozer only never plan on taking that blade off of it uh in tight areas it'd probably be really good and for some finish work it'd probably be really good i don't know if it's 100 percent an actual dozer dozer as far as comfortability running every day but it'll definitely get the job done i think where this thing really shines is how universal it becomes yeah um which i guess we should switch over to the other side and talk about ctl mode yep so i think this is where this thing really shines of how universal it is first off it's a dozer but man let me tell you it'll make one heck of a ctl as well yeah. this thing comes factory with a yard and a quarter bucket this thing is absolutely absolutely massive and that machine handles it with ease oh yeah it does uh, the one thing that sticks out in my mind is the video of us, uh, two things really, moving the shot rock. Anybody yeah. that's ever scooped and hauled riprap or shot rock, this thing, man, it just run right into the pile. No issue whatsoever. Full bucket. Tracked it off in very adverse conditions. Um, yeah. No problems whatsoever. The other thing that comes to my mind was loading the um, high-sided triaxle with it. Mm -hmm. I think it was like eight or nine scoops to load a triaxle. Reached over the side, no problem whatsoever. Picked it up. It, I mean, it just did absolutely, oh, yeah. absolutely awesome. And like, like we said previously, you can go from that blade, full on bulldozer, to a CTL in, uh, let's just call it a minute. A minute. Yeah. It, it's very easily achievable in a minute. Now, I did kind of mention a little bit earlier whenever we were in the cab. The one shortcoming it may have is running uh, some. Um, different attachments uh especially if they require uh, like a selector valve on them where you got to use the the switches up there on the a pillar it can be done but it's a little bit cumbersome to do it uh we did we should hit on this we did run a fecal mulcher on this and we kind of ran out of time we couldn't quite get it dialed into this machine uh unfortunately it wasn't our mulcher and we ran out of time but we did run a mulcher also on a 620 which is a very similar yeah. machine I want to preface this. I am not a mulching guy. The 620 was very impressive. I think this machine would be very comparable to any other machine on the market as far as the 620. I think once the 550 gets tuned in, uh, it would be right there with it, don't you? 
We did not run it whenever we ran it. A lot of questions we get is the heat. We did not run it on a hot day. Uh, it was a cooler day when we ran it and we didn't get to run it for an extended period of times. I seen no signs of heat being an issue. Case has tested this in hotter environments, uh, Texas and Arizona, and haven't seen any issues. But if you guys out there have ran marching heads on these a whole lot, uh, comment down below in the comments and let guys know how it's uh, worked. We are hoping to get a little better video of that, a little more on that uh in that department we just kind of ran out of, ran out of time to uh be honest with you but man i don't uh, ctl mode it's pretty straightforward yeah. it's just it's just a beast yeah it is uh, it's an absolute absolute beast uh whatsoever so let's hit on the one other attachment on the back the ripper, the ripper. um so that comes in handy in ctl mode or the dozer mode this is unique to the dl 550 the 620s don't have this on it i was concerned that ripper was going to be a hang-up point like going through ditches and stuff like that stump holes i can't remember it ever giving us any problems can you no, no i mean we crossed through that one ditch and yeah never, if never you guys look up. the way this thing folds up and the way i got it parked right now may not be the best example but as it comes up those rippers turn in and uh it's just it just really wasn't an issue uh, -uh. uh nothing like i thought it was going to be they have thought ahead on it to access anything in the engine bay you do have to lower the ripper but you can do that without ever even going in the cab we've covered this in some past videos as well you got a little lever right here you pull drop that down and that pretty much gives you full access to everything else so as far as serviceability uh fluids checking filters everything like that uh very easy to get to the main items uh, we did not run this machine enough to do an oil change or anything like that on it this one here the cab actually folds forward which we did not do but from the pictures that i've seen it looks like it makes everything fairly accessible uh, it does have a reversing fan on it which seems to work fairly well uh, it did catch a little bit of material up here in this upper screen nothing that was too concerning to me for our applications again you mulching guys can kind of chime in and let me know if there's any concerns for you guys but uh no dirt funnels anything of any sorts i mean overall it's just been a pretty solid piece yeah so playing behind the scenes we got to answer the two most burning questions we get asked the most often you know what they are and what's that how much does it cost and are you keeping <laughs> <laughs> so the first one let's talk about cost i have uh, i honestly and i'm being truly honest with you guys i honestly do not know and it's hard for me to give you guys a number it's going to be a little bit dependent on your dealer your location how you spec it out ripper no ripper there's a bunch of different options a lot of stuff is standard it's not standard uh so i hate to throw a number out if you guys are seriously interested in one of these machines i believe you're going to be around the 200,000 mark but don't quote me on that please just contact your dealer and get a price from those guys because they can get you an actual real number so the next question is let's just say hypothetically this is a two hundred thousand dollar machine is it worth it like you said uh pole barn builders somebody like that i think i'd love it so you you bring up my next point i think it's a hundred percent dependent on your application yeah because this machine for sure can take the place of two different machines yes. it can be a dozer it can be a ctl and it can be very efficient at both of them so yeah. uh you bring up a pole barn builder this is the guy uh subdivision guy so if you go if you want to go in and level off a lot dozer blade ripper come back drill holes ctl mode yeah Go back in and put rock in. Rock this in. thing is fully capable for laser or GPS control. So you can put the blade back in, go and put rock in, run your grade. Mm -hmm. Do your drainage work around there. Do anything you want to. Put a power rake on it, load up, set trusses, and get out of there. So this, this for like a pole barn guy or a building pad guy, I think this thing yeah. would be. You, you bring up a good point, though, on that power raking. When you did the power raking, as long as you weren't spinning, remember how good it did you yeah couldn't even still tracks see. Yeah. yeah it did a, it so did a it did really way good. better job than we anticipated yeah. so uh so pole barn guys one example i think this thing has a place in right away work um i think yeah. there's a lot of uh, applications in right away work that'll that'll work uh 
I also find this being the machine on a bigger job site that's going to be the catch-all. You know, he can he can go pack pipe over to the sanitary sewer guys. Yeah. He can backfill. He can run some grade for a sidewalk. Um, he can do a lot of different things on a on a bigger job site, kind of carry picking retaining up retaining blocks. Carry retaining blocks. He can pick up the slack for a lot of different people. So, is it worth the money? Honestly, if you look at it as you're getting two machines in one, I think it's kind yeah. of a no-brainer. So. Yeah. Uh, I don't see no issues. I don't I don't see no issues with the price point at all for what you're getting after running this thing and seeing what what you get for the money. Uh, the price points this this kind of a mute point for me. It, it really comes down to is this the machine for your application application or not. So the next thing is are we keeping it man behind the scenes? Yeah, let's keep it. <laughs> Oh, as unfortunately, to be honest with you guys, this demo unit is going to go back to case and it's not because we don't like the piece of equipment or we don't want it, but it don't quite fit the application we got. We need universal machines, but we don't need the universal machine in this space. Uh, we just do too much actual dedicated dozer work and then what we use our CTL for is more of just a, a cleanup, cleanup machine. Yeah. Uh, we don't use it as a major production machine. Our CTLs don't get a lot of hours on them in a year. So it don't quite fit into our application for what we're doing. Not purchasing the machine based on the performance or the like or dislike of the machine. It's just based on our application is why we're gonna, we're gonna pass on this particular unit. But man, I don't really have a whole lot negative to say about the machine and if we had the proper application for it we would buy it in a heartbeat for sure if you give me the checkbook i'll buy it right now <laughs> <laughs> i bet you would have you guys uh, you guys haven't it. noticed aaron's kind of taking a little bit of a liking to this machine and he's not happy about the fact it's uh yeah it's going back like I but said, once you get used to it, it and it did take me a while but once you got used to it it was it that's was the nice. biggest thing that's the biggest thing i want to caution people about yeah. If you go to a trade show, hop in this thing with a dozer blade on it and go make three or four passes, you're probably not going to like it. Exactly. Because it is so different. Yep. And that is what's so difficult about this machine is you can't compare it to anything else because there's nothing else out there like it. Yeah. So it's truly in a class of its own. But if you give it three or four hours and just sit there and learn, if you're a good operator and sit there and learn the nuances of the machine, mm -hmm. you're going to like it. It's going to accomplish the job. Yeah. It's going to accomplish the job for sure. Like I said, we put several hundred hours on it. A lot of different applications. There's multiple, 20-something videos on the channel of this thing running with the blade, the pie rake, the bucket, in the mud, in the brush, in the dirt. Uh, we pretty much threw about everything out that yep. we could think of. Uh, and it, and it, for the most part, it always surprised us. Yeah. We don't really have any any complaints whatsoever so guys i hope that answered a lot of your comments just trying to give you an honest review uh if you're going to purchase one of these machines kind of what to look for what to think about as far as how it would fit into your operation um if you want more detailed examples of some of the stuff we talked about you'll find full like videos of doing that application uh on the channel so go back and check them out need to get a playlist on the channel of the uh dl550 for sure but uh Cannot thank all the folks at Case enough for giving us this opportunity, man, Jeff, and the whole team. Yeah. They've been absolutely awesome to work with. Uh, we've had some feedback and some thoughts for them, and they've been uh, more than willing to kind of listen to what uh, yeah. what we got to say, which is uh, really appreciated. And already implemented a few a few changes on it, so it is a cool piece, man. It just it, it just looks awesome. It is a cool piece. So, but unfortunately. That is going to be the it. That is going to be the end for the DL550 on the Dirt Perfect channel. At least for now, it is uh, it is an awesome, awesome piece of equipment. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give them a big old thumbs up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, the Case DL550. If you want to go over to the Case's social media stuff and tell them thanks for letting us have it, that would be much appreciated. Thank you guys for watching and supporting the channel because you allow us to do cool stuff like that. And uh, we got to get back to work. Yes, we do. All right. Tell them All bye. Right. See you guys.